my thoughts on the world, the Iraq dinar, and everything that's going on as far as geopolitics, which is what it's all about in the end. So if you think about every war we've ever been in, everything has been to protect the dollar. Anything that was a hedge against the dollar, it will eventually fail. And anybody that tries to go outside of the dollar, we go to war with. And we take them over, we wipe them out, we rebuild them. Of course, fund both sides and end up making money off of it. Iraq is no different, which is why we're waiting for it to correct its value. Not revalue, correct its value. All right? In one day, it lost all of its value. So in one day, it can get all of its value plus interest back. Okay? So when you think about everything that's going on, you got to think about the West versus the East. And when I say the East, let's just go ahead and say Russia and China. Okay? <clears throat> or, or just say Russia. All right? Russia has all kinds of resources. They want to take over the world. Look at the history. They will kill. They'll do anything they want to take over the world. What has the West been doing? Suppressing them. Keeping them from getting a port to trade. Now, if you're Russia, they've put out all kinds of books out there on their strategy, which is what we're going against. Russia is attached to Syria and Iran. <clears throat> what do those two countries uh, surround? Iraq. What does Iraq have? Oil. <clears throat> what does Iran have? A warm water port. Okay? So, Russia has been using the divide and conquer strategy where they broke off and became a bunch of different countries basically to divert attention, right? Rather than just having one source and all the attention right at Russia, they, they divide it up. And, and been, now your attention's in Ukraine and Syria and Iran and all these other places, right? Russia's been using China for their cheap labor. What do they want, though, eventually? They want to be able to trade. And we, when I say we, the West has been suppressing them. So look up all the American bases, and you'll see Iran is completely surrounded by like 20 American bases. All right? It's basically keeping, and on one side it's Afghanistan, the other side it's Iraq. All right? We're keeping Russia from being able to go through those countries and utilizing Iran to do what the heck they want. Now, anything that you invest in that is a hedge against the dollar, I don't care what it is. Yeah, I like a certain few cryptos, but eventually I think they're, they're probably going to fail. They may pick one that's going to end up being the digital dollar or utilize you know just a handful that might be worth something. But anything that you see out there that is hedging the dollar, you should watch out. Now, in one day, the Iraq dinar devalued. Okay? They just passed the budget yesterday, finally. All right? Now, the revalue or the correcting of the value of the dinar is not attached to the budget, apparently, because nothing has changed yet. But they can revalue within... This, within one day, just like they devalued. And it's not really a devalue or a value, it's just correcting the value of their dinar. Right? They can't really be a country if they're trading stuff that a tenth of a penny to the dollar. And everything is going to be traded, they're still using the dollar eventually in the background. Okay? Because the U.S. is the buyers of the world. Right? China is worthless without the U.S. buying their goods. People in China don't even buy their goods. I've been to China. I don't even buy their goods. They're overpriced there. I don't know how people in China can buy their goods. I go to the malls. Terrible. Now I go to a bar. Everything there is digital. They just show their phone to the, the bartender. Boom. Instant transaction. We have that now. I've, I've traded stuff from Coinbase to the teller at my bank, Bank of America. I've transferred $10,000 within one second. I like the, the teller literally said, hey, you don't have that much in your account right now. Ding. It was there within a second. Showed up on the screen, and the teller was like, whoa, blown away. All right, so there's people out there that don't even realize we're using digital already. All right, so yeah, we're going to go to a, a digital dollar, which one they use, 
I don't know, XRP, XLM, uh, Lightning, Bitcoin. So apparently it can go really super fast. Uh, but anything that we have that's a hedge against the dollar, I'm going to be weary on it. They're going to have to utilize the dollar and then make it a digital dollar and probably end up being the same exact value. Now, how long can Iraq keep their dinar suppressed on the value? They can't be a country. All right, you got everybody picking on them like bullies. They're like a house of gold sitting right in the middle of a whole ton of thieves. They got all kinds of resources, okay? They're like the richest country over there, all right? It's like you have a house on your block that's worth more than anybody else's, and you got a bunch of little kids living there, all right? <laughs> They're going to have to value their country their rate and correct it to the right rate otherwise they won't be a country they can't have all those resources and be, and be relevant in the world without it I'm going to keep getting picked on Iran's going to keep sneaking in there I know, I know people in Iraq, I lived in Iraq for a year they hate Iran, most of the Iranians came in and they're like stealing the oil and selling it so different than what uh, Saddam was doing. He was selling oil on the black market. That's when we came in there and put a stop to things, which I still think, who, kn who knows what really happened over there, because I think everything is a big show. It's all a setup, and it's just crazy that, you know, you have 9-11. It gave us a reason to go into Iraq, and then 19 years later, we have COVID-19 that shuts down the world basically eliminate small business all across the world. Anything that's not running smoothly, it's a smooth running operation, it's knocking them out. It's, it's, it's showing the entire world that you don't need all that real estate and all, the, all your employees you know, taking up space uh, at work whenever you can outsource and they can work from home. It keeps less people on the roads. I know I'm diverting, but it's all connected. All right? With everybody staying home, it's going to keep less people on the roads. We already know that we're, uh, we have population increasing every year. Right? If you have a population increasing every year, they're having more kids, it's just going to eventually get out of control where you got so many people. So they're probably putting all this stuff in place so you don't have so many people on the roads clogging up all the roads. China, some people can't even have, most people can't even have cars, okay? And then the ones that do, there's certain days they can't even drive. All right. Maybe they're trying to implement something to where they see the population, you know, increasing. They're setting up a process to keep things under control so it doesn't come to that. All right. Uh, probably probably makes it to where we're less dependent on oil as well if we have less people, on, you know, in vehicles right, running around clogging up the streets. Um, they'll probably keep the the gas price up a little bit that would probably keep people from driving so much and and finding jobs that are near them rather than far away traveling all the time but what is this going to do all right you've got iraq right in the middle of arabic wars countries that are greedy the east eastern uh geopolitical enemy okay uh, Russia trying to utilize their tactics to take over and here you got the West trying to suppress keep them out and get everyone into the American dollar which is why our Dow has not decreased all right we shut the entire world down and our stock market went up what is that telling you you got all all those worlds all those countries that uh, had inflation and everybody's trying to put their money somewhere where they don't lose value. All right? Put it in our Dow. Put it in our stock market. Put it in the dollar. It's not going anywhere. All right? You got conspiracy theories out there, uh, you know, trying to give us the vaccine and need a vaccine passport. Well, it's not a conspiracy theory, but you got them basically talking about population control and they want a, a agenda they want to 
have the population, what is it, the Georgia Guidestones, they want a certain population. So you can look at it like that, or you can think, hey, you know what, they're trying to put in a system that's set up for people not clogging up all the roads when we get all this population increase. Trying to make us less dependent on oil. Our dollar is backed by American labor. Now, we just had an agreement with Canada and Mexico. So Mexico is going to be our cheap labor. All right? And then we're keeping the borders open. All right? I know they talk about the wall and they keep talking about people in cages and people coming across and out there killing and raping. Whatever. The more people, if you have open borders, that means you have cheap labor. You're going to have constantly be able to keep the, the cost of labor down because you're always going to have people that are going to be in competition. All right? More supply, less demand, lower the cost. Now, what is going to rule the world? It's production. Production equals wealth. All right? How do you get production? You have to have resources and you have to have low labor cost. So Mexico is our low labor cost. China, how do they get wealthy? Okay, how do they get powerful? Because they have low labor cost. But they manipulated their currency. Now we got tariffs on them. Okay? So they're slowly going to fail and Mexico is going to take the spot of China. Russia, they've got all kinds of resources. But you know what? They have an extremely large cost of labor and transportation to pull all those resources out and get them where they need to be. By the time they get there, they got no profit. All right? So they're going to eventually fail. And they have no way to trade. They have no port to trade. What are they going to do? Transport everything across the land? China, all right? If we're making whatever they have in Mexico, why would anybody want to be in China? China won't even let people exchange their currency to American dollars over there. All right? They're trying to keep the money and the wealth within China. All right? So American companies are going to pull out because who wants to be a rich Chinaman when you can't use that money across the world? All right? Heck, I, I, when I'm over there, I need my passport just to exchange like a few hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, we're going to end up going to crypto. It's going to be used for all the robots that are going to be basically taking over all the production and a lot of uh, a lot of our bigger corporations that are they're trying to go to all robots. So what I'm seeing is the big picture is it's just a West versus East geopolitical war. COVID is nothing more than uh, a different strand of the flu that they made a test for. Because you see the number of flu went from 38 million down to like nothing. And then COVID took its place. All right? And then you talk to people that are in hospitals. Yeah, there's going to be a rush of people because everybody likes to be a victim. And if people are brainwashed on TV to go to, go to the hospital because they got something, they're going to go to the hospital. So it's going to make it look abnormal because most people that got the flu didn't go to the hospital, did they? You know what? But when you're brainwashed to go get toilet paper, what do you do? You go get toilet paper. All right? So people who went and got toilet paper is no different than the people that went to the hospital because they had COVID or a different strain of the flu. But what was the bigger picture? Shutting down the world. Getting rid of all the flack. Showing the East. We're number one. We're in control. You mess with us, we're going to shut you down. And we're eventually going to rise now that we got the, the cheap labor in Mexico and we got that agreement. And we kind of shut down OPEC. And if we can get Iraq to correct their currency, you're going to have an injection of wealth in America that's going to basically be the fuel for the engine to keep the world running. Because what good is cheap labor in other countries? Um, without someone buying the product. You need to have an injection of wealth somehow, some way. I don't know if they're going to just skyrocket a few cryptos, kind of like they did with Bitcoin, uh, or if they're going to, you know, I, the, the one that's the most common sense for me is Iraq to revalue or correct a currency value. Because that would be an injection of wealth. It would pay America back for the war. 
Um, and it would keep the strength of the dollar right where it's at. Then we'll go with a digital dollar, and we'll probably that when we, when we go digital, it's going to keep people from being able to not pay taxes, um, hide money. They probably won't be able to buy big purchases without digital. That's my guess. Okay, especially foreign. All right, they're not going to be able to manipulate their currency. When it's digital, it will be a smart digital uh, like technology that will know immediately what the transfer rate is and will convert one currency to another and it won't allow for currency manipulation unless, you know, they got a certain GDP and it probably, you know, it's already based off of like how much GDP you have every year. And we already know that China manipulated their currency to keep their labor costs low and their own country can't even buy their own goods. I know I'm kind of going in circles here but I'm trying to give you all my thoughts on what's going down without conspiracy attached to it it's a geopolitical war and somehow some way everybody's broke living paycheck to paycheck when I say everybody I'm going to say 90% of the population so not a lot of people have a lot of savings so there has to be an injection of wealth somehow some way to make the economy thrive and run like a rocket Right? And it can't just be a stimulus check for a couple thousand. I'm talking putting $100,000 in everybody's bank account or just making a million people millionaires overnight, somehow, some way. Over and out, that's my thoughts. You can correct me on whatever. <laughs> I don't mind it. I, I get information from all different sources. And once I attach it to other sources, I figure out and decipher uh, what I believe. <laughs>